Hey guys, my name is Ryan, and welcome to Upwatch Central. So you guys seem to really enjoy the last video we did with Low Mana Gamers, so we thought we'd get in touch with those guys again to do another one. As always, you can find their channel in the description and comments below. It's definitely worth checking out if you're interested in the lore side of Overwatch. But without further ado, let's get straight into this video. Hey everyone, this is Low Mana. I am Dante. And I am Kurz. One of the hottest topics for a long time now has been the identity of Farah's father. With a popular theory since Anna's release suggesting it could be Reinhardt. There are numerous pieces of evidence both for and against, so let's see what adds up. Before Anna came out way back in July, most suggestions from the community centred on Farah being the daughter of either Gabriel Reyes, now known as Reaper, or Jack Morrison, now known as 76. Much like Torbjorn, who I don't think anyone ever suggested, Reinhardt wasn't given much consideration. As with any new release, Anna brought with her a whole host of new skins, voice lines, and interactions with the existing character roster, and these changed the game quite considerably. First up, let's look at what is probably the sneakiest hint Blizzard could have given us, but one that has been picked up by the community. Skin naming. Almost every character has a generally consistent theme behind the names given to their rare quality skins that meshes with a certain aspect of their character. Junkrats are all focused around destruction, Bastions around nature, divas around bold fruity flavours, etc. Reinhardts are all types of hard metal used in armour or construction, for example, copper, cobalt, brass, and so on. And when Anna came out, all of hers were named after gemstones, such as citrine and peridot. Pharaoh, however, while not entirely unique in this, has a 50 50 split in her skin names. Half are hard metals, namely copper and titanium, and where else have we seen those? The other half are gemstones, namely emerald and amethyst. While a few other characters have a mix of skin name sources, no other character has such an obvious inheritance from two others, especially when we already know one of those characters is her mother. It would be a very typically Blizzard move to tip us off in such a subtle way as to who Farah's father really is. Secondly, and to our mind much more importantly, come the voice lines that were added. Anna understandably has a reaction with every other founding member of Overwatch, along with a few she had grown closer to over the years. With Reaper, they're mildly antagonistic. With Mercy, they're professional. With 76, McCree and Torb, they're friendly and a bit jokey. With Reinhardt, however, there is a definite sense of regret and emotion between them, particularly in these lines. Anna! How can this be? I thought you were dead. I'm sorry, Reinhardt. After everything that happened, I needed time. There's also a flirting line where they compliment how each other looks, we consider this one to be much more important. Reinhardt's tone of voice is significantly more upset than 76 or Torb, who are both mostly shocked. Reinhardt sounds hurt. Both 76 and Torb also use the collective we or they all thought she was dead. Between Reinhardt and Anna, it's more personal. They both speak purely from their own perspective, because that's their first instinct. He is the only one of the four, the only one of any of the characters, that Anna actually apologises to for disappearing. And while it's not conclusive, her excuse of needing time is something people only give to someone that they share a strong emotional link to. Before we get carried away though, there are equally a number of issues that work against Reinhardt being Farah's father. As always with Overwatch, timelines are a very strange subject to attack, but in the case of Farah's parentage there are some clear discrepancies already. From what we have at our disposal, numerous important events happened, and I quote, over 30 years ago. These are the start of the Omnic Crisis the formation of Overwatch, and the birth of Farrea Amari. The only one we have a concrete date on is the last. As we know Farah to be 32 years old in the current timeline. We also know however that Anna's primary motivation for fighting against the Omnix and joining Overwatch was in order to protect her family, and given the unlikelihood of her waging the early infiltration style of warfare Overwatch used against the Omniums while being heavily pregnant, it seems certain that she had Farrea before joining Overwatch. For Reinhardt to be Farah's father, they would therefore have had to have met prior to Overwatch's creation. Although not impossible, this seems unlikely with the commitments in the Crusaders and hers in the Elite Egyptian Sniper Division. What therefore seems more likely is what the evidence Kurz gave earlier, that Reinhardt and Anna may have had a very close, potentially romantic relationship within the ranks of Overwatch, but without Reinhardt necessarily being biological father to Farah. The voice lines are certainly indicative enough of them being more than simple friends and colleagues there, but we can't quite get the timelines to align. It is Blizzard though, and they do have a habit of getting the historical dates a bit less cut and dry than we would like. There is one final piece to the puzzle for the case against, however, 
and that's Sombra's web of conspiracy. Sombra has done a brilliant job, as far as we can tell, of laying out all the personal, professional and conspiratorial relationships here. But while Anna and Farah have a very clear, very direct link, Reinhardt is miles away. In fact, beyond the obvious links via Overwatch, it would appear as if Sombra is unaware of any additional connection between the two founding members, instead placing a faceless, unknown icon between mother and daughter. There's been a lot of speculation that this unknown figure is Farah's dad, and if that proves to be the case, then it isn't Reinhardt. We yet to meet anyone else who has as much knowledge of the inner workings of the Overwatch universe as Sombra does. So either she somehow missed the link, considers it to be unimportant, or there simply is no tie between them for her to follow. Cheers for watching this look at both sides of the Anna Hart discussion. I'm sure the Overwatch Central guys would love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments below. Again, a big thanks to Ryan and Miska for hosting us, and if you're interested in more Overwatch lore, please feel free to check out our channel. Until then, I've been Kurz. And I've been Dante. See, See you next time. time.